Are you digging up the dirt on your dead? Want to find out how? Hear the latest on new family history sources and websites with interesting and fun guests and experts. Find out what other people have been learning about their ancestors. From kings to thieves, inventors to farmers, nothing that's been discovered should surprise us anymore, but it always does. Find out what we mean. Great family history stories and information are on the way now with Extreme Genes, Family History Radio, and ExtremeGenes.com. Grandpa stole his first buggy in 1892. Extreme Genes. Extreme Genes. Uh, I met your grandma, Big Sloppin, in 46. Oh, every Christmas, we'd visit my Uncle Fred in prison. Hello, genies, and welcome back to another round of America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. I am Fisher, your radio root sleuth on the program where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. I am hoping you're finding all kinds of great stories and information in your search for your ancestors. And I'm also hoping you're picking up some ideas here on the show on how to break through some of those brick walls in your lines. One method that a lot of people are going to is DNA testing. And I'm excited to tell you that the expert team at industryleader23andme.com will now be appearing regularly on the show to answer your DNA questions. So you can hear it direct from the people who know best. And we start this week with Dr. Kasha Britz in about nine minutes. And if you have a question about DNA testing, email me at fisher at extremegenes.com and we'll run it by the experts at 23andMe. Likewise, if you're an ordinary person who has made an extraordinary discovery, don't be shy about it. Let us know about your journey and you could find yourself on the show. And before we go any further, we want to give a shout out to our latest affiliate, News Talk 92.3 KTAR-FM in Phoenix, Arizona. We are delighted to be a part of the outstanding weekend lineup of VP and Market Manager Scott Sutherland, VP of Content and Operations Ryan Hatch, and News Director Paul Ihander. Thanks, guys. We are so glad to be on in Phoenix. And it's time once again to join our good friend in Boston, the Chief Genealogist for the New England Historic Genealogical Society and American Ancestors, David Allen Lambert. Other than your Red Sox, David, how's it going? It's going good. We're having a nice summer out here, except for having a hailstorm that was something of biblical proportion. We were doing okay the other day. (laughs) Those things happen. Uh, We had 50 homes in our neighborhood flooded in a big rain torrent the other day as well, so those things happen. What do you got for us today, buddy? Well, you know, I always like to think outside the box, and as far as genealogy goes, you know, you think of what fills into a chart or in your genealogy program, some names and dates and places. How about stories? So here's one to chew over. How did you meet your spouse? Well, mine I met on a blind date, but the details of it, it's not on your marriage record. Right. not in your marriage notice in the paper. Right. So where do you record it if you don't have a diary or a letter? But then let's think beyond us. You know the story how your parents met? Mm. I do. My my parents met at work. How about yours? Yep. Mine met to actually living in Nevada, filing for divorces. Oh, well, the, the, <laughs> there's a story right there. Yes. And then you go back to your grandparents. One of my grandparents, my uh, maternal grandfather, he was a Marine stationed on a ship. One of the cats on board had kittens. He carried a basket over for one of the guys who was my grandmother's niece. Uh, and he ended up meeting my widowed grandmother. They got married, and a few kids later, I'm, you know, I'm responsible because a cat had kittens. <laughs> <laughs> so these are great stories. And now in genealogy, if you know them or you can interview the older aunts or uncles to get the story your parents have passed, get it down. It's a great element. That's right. Um, and maybe in your research, you do the detective reasoning. My great grandparents in 1864 lived across the street from each other in Boston as teenagers. I don't know the story, but I can deduce that's probably how they met. Of course. Perfect. That's great advice. And, you know, we can only go back so far, but as long as a few people are still around, you might be able to get some of those stories out and down on paper for the future generations. I like to think that if a couple of people that are listening just record that, we've just created a time capsule, you and I. There you go. (laughs) Good stuff. Yeah, you know, I have another interesting one that you may have not thought of. It's through the Freedom of Information Act. And, of course, on our Twitter page for Extreme Genes and the Facebook page, I'll have all the web links for you so you don't have to worry about writing them down. But through Freedom of Information, you can make a request if your ancestor was living in America 
in 1940, male or female, and they were not naturalized, they would have had to fill out information with the INS department. Now, are you really? Yeah. Yes, I have a grandmother who was still uh, a foreigner in 1940. Well, I can tell you, on two of my grandfathers, one I got a 187-page report. Wow. The other one, 65 pages. And on my mother, who only lived in Canada for the first six months of her life, but they came over illegally. Oh. Uh, and they tried to deport my mother at 13, and they had a whole interrogation of my 13-year-old mother. My eyes welled up with tears reading this. My mother never spoke about this, so it must have been so embarrassing for the family. Wow. Um, that's crazy. And what were in these pages? What did they ask, and what was the response? When they arrived, where they were born, uh, where they're employed. So every year, once you registered, until you became a naturalized citizen, you had to supply you where you were living, who you were employed by, or if you hadn't been employed. Um, it's great stuff. Like I said, there are many time capsules that they're under the auspices of the Department of Homeland Security now, but these are great records that you can get. So if you have a you know, a grandparent or a parent or a great-grandparent that was not a citizen in 1940, this is something you can go after, and I'll explain all the details uh, on the web links. You know, that had to have been in anticipation of World War II, don't you think? Absolutely, absolutely. They saw it coming. And it was uh, actually, uh, the, the reason this came up is because a good friend who's one of the Extreme Genes listeners who lives out in Utah, Yvette Baudouin, she uh, was talking about her grandfather, and I said, do you realize he has a file? And so she's into looking for that. So maybe we'll get her on the radio and talking about what's found in her answer. I have never heard that before. That is great stuff. What else do you have? Okay, we have the information back to you from my test drive of Heritus software. I think for twenty nine ninety nine, I'm going to go and invest in this. I love what it does with charts. You're able to move the box charts around, so you're not stuck with what you see. You can move them around. I like the visual appeal to it, and the demo version for Heritus allows you to put 50 people so you can test drive it like I did. Uh, I think you'll be satisfied. And it's on the Mac and the Windows platforms, which is wonderful. Remind us, David, exactly what this does. It is a genealogy software program. Heritus is a genealogy software program, just like a lot of the other commercial ones out there. It's not well known, but I like how very easy it is to use. I'm going to show it to a couple of newbies in genealogy, and it's very straightforward where you plug in the information and you print out the charts. So you really don't have to be a computer programmer to understand the nuts and bolts on this one. Okay. And, of course, our NEHGS free guest user database that I'd like to talk about this week is Alabama deaths from 1908 to 1974. So that's something that we um, have out, and we've released that in conjunction with Family Search. Oh, and that's great because we've got a lot of listeners listening in Alabama. So that's uh, good news for you down south. Exactly. Well, Fish, have a wonderful weekend. Don't forget to start writing down those stories. That's right. And we all have to do that to make sure that we don't lose them because they can be lost so darn easily. Thanks so much, David Allen Lambert from the New England Historic Genealogical Society and American Ancestors. Talk to you next week. Talk to you soon. And coming up next, we'll be visiting with Dr. Kasha Britz from 23andMe.com about the latest in researching your ancestry through DNA. That's in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Extreme Genes is brought to you in part by 23andMe.com. 23andMe is a personalized genetic service providing information and tools for you to learn about and explore your DNA. You can see what your 23 pairs of chromosomes say about you and your family. You'll receive a detailed ancestry composition report, which tells you what percent of your DNA is from different regions around the world. You can also find and connect with people who share your DNA to help fill in and refine your family tree. It's easy to use. Simply order a DNA kit at 23andMe.com slash Extreme Genes and your kit will arrive in the mail. All you do is provide a small saliva sample and send it back in the prepaid package. When your reports are ready, you can access them in a secure online account and start exploring. 
Order your DNA kit today for $99 at 23andMe.com slash Extreme Genes. That's the number 23andMe.com slash Extreme Genes. Genies, not long ago, something happened with one particular online research service that changed everything. It happened with a service that already has 75 million members worldwide, and it's not who you think it is. Hi, it's Fisher, and you know I'm always looking for new and better ways for you to discover your ancestors, not just the data, but the stories. The online service I'm talking about takes your family tree and then uses its powerful automated technology to match the people in your tree to over 5 billion records from around the world. Censuses, newspaper stories, vital records with 97% accuracy. This means no more wading through thousands of useless so-called hints. This also means the site itself is constantly looking for matches for you even while you're sleeping. What site does all this? It's MyHeritage.com. You can try MyHeritage.com for free. Here's a special gift from me. Use discount code ExtremeGenes after signing up and get an exclusive 20% discount at MyHeritage.com. Did you know that Family Search Family Tree is available through a powerful new mobile app experience? That's right. Now you can view, edit, and even add information to ancestors in your family tree whenever and wherever you are. You no longer need to wait to get home or make a date with your computer to view or update your family tree. You can add details to your tree when visiting with family or when capturing details from a trip to the cemetery. You can share new family history discoveries from classroom settings. You can even make the most of your time when waiting for doctor appointments or car repairs. Get started today by downloading the free Family Search Family Tree app to your Apple or Android device. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to get the Family Tree app for free. Exploring and expanding your family tree has never been more convenient. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to download the Family Search Family Tree mobile app today. And welcome back to America's Family History Show. It's Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth. And so excited to have 23 and me coming on as a partner in the show. And part of this, of course, is to take advantage of of their DNA experts who can share so much information uh, with you and with me so we can all kind of learn together some of the things that are happening in the field. And uh, our first expert to have on is uh, Dr. Kasha Britz. Dr. Britz, great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. I am so excited to be learning from you and some of your colleagues about what's going on in the DNA field right now. Tell us a little about yourself. How did you get interested in this and how did you wind up at 23andMe? Well, maybe to backtrack a little bit, I'm a population geneticist at 23andMe, so most people don't know what that means. But right. Basically, my whole life I've been interested in understanding human history from using genetics to learn about how humans have migrated around the planet, how populations are related to each other, how they're different. So I actually did my PhD using computational methods and statistics to try and really dig into human DNA and learn from the DNA about our history as humans. I work on the methods and the statistics that underlie a lot of the results that we provide to customers about where they're from in the world and how they're related to each other. And so that's how I've been involved with 23andMe. And I've just really been excited about the interest and the excitement that people have about using DNA, which I think it's just a fantastic tool It is to really dig into your own history. Now, tell me about this a little bit. I, I would imagine digging around with the migration patterns of people, this is where now we start to get into the percentages of ethnic background when we get the final breakout from our saliva test, right? Exactly. So we have a method we call ancestry composition. What we do is we compare your DNA to the DNA of people from around the planet. And using that, we ask, how does patterns of variation in your DNA compare to these other people's? And using that, we figure out where different bits of your DNA came from in the world. Now, it's something like looking through a telescope. Wouldn't you compare it that way? Because you're, you're looking at stars, and they all look to be the same distance away. But, of course, they can be billions of miles from each other. 
And, and so we still see the light coming through. It's kind of challenging, though, isn't it, for the DNA field to actually go through and figure out, okay, well, yes, you have this percentage, but this is where your people were at this point, and this is where they were before that. Do you think we'll ever get to that point where we can start to uh, break it out in that way? Well, it is really challenging. If we go back to thinking about human history, humans evolved, we think, probably in Africa within the last 200,000 years, which it sounds like a long time, but in evolutionary history terms, that's actually not very long. And so as a result, we're all very, very similar. If you look at genetic variation, the vast majority of genetic variation is shared among all populations. And there's only tiny, tiny, tiny differences that sort of differentiate different groups. We don't just look at, okay, this variant or this, this mutation is found in this part of the world. We actually, because that wouldn't be enough signal, we actually look what sets of variation, what patterns of variation. It's a very subtle process to really be able to differentiate that. And yes, it is actually very hard to do, and we're always working to improve the results that we can give by improving our methods, improving the reference data that we use from different parts of the world, and we're always striving to improve that because what we hear from customers is that they're always excited to get finer and finer resolution of their ancestry. Right. I find it interesting that you can do a test... And then sometime later, you start seeing percentages begin to vary. And I would assume that's because you've refined your techniques a little bit more. Yeah, so we're constantly working to try and improve the results that we provide. And so as a result, when we do have an update, you might see some of those numbers change. There's other things that we can do, actually, which not everyone is completely aware of. One of the steps that we do, the scientific term for it is called phasing. But basically, when you think about your DNA, which hopefully we'll go into a little bit more, you have two sets of chromosomes that you inherited, one set from your mom and one set from your dad. And in order to really be able to estimate your origins, we really want to figure out which particular variants you inherited from mom and from your dad. And we do that pretty well just from your own DNA using statistical methods. But if you have a parent who's also genotyped, well, then we can actually learn and improve the estimates of what you got from mom and what you got from dad based on having their DNA to compare to as well. And so you'll see when you have a parent genotyped that your results should actually improve as a result of taking into account their DNA, which is really cool. Well, that is interesting. Let me ask you this. Most people, are they most interested in their ethnicity or matching up with other people trying to find living family members who might be, you know, birth families, that type of thing, or making connections or trying to break down brick walls in their genealogy? I think it's everything. Maybe I can segue a little bit. When we talk about the human genome, we sort of talk about it as this abstract thing. But in fact, your DNA is packaged up into various pieces or bundles, right? So you've got right. um, your 23 pairs of chromosomes. So 22 of those are, are your autosomes or your non-sex chromosomes. And then one pair of those are either an X and a Y if you're a male or two X chromosomes if you're a female. There's also another bit of DNA called your mitochondrial genome. It's a little small bit of DNA that gets inherited from mother to child. And actually, a lot of your different DNA gets passed down in different ways. So it can get at different pieces of information depending on which piece of DNA you're looking at. So the Y chromosome gets passed down from father to son, and your autosomal DNA traces back to all of your recent ancestors. And so by looking at these different pieces of DNA, we can investigate different stories. So we provide haplogroups, your mitochondrial haplogroup, your Y chromosome haplogroup, as well as all your autosomal DNA. And so wow. using all of these different pieces together, um, you can really start to pull together your story. So you can look at your ancestral origins, but you can also look at who you share DNA with to try and, like you said, break down those brick walls. And so we kind of have a one package deal that really helps you take advantage of all the information that's in there. So what are you most excited about, Kasha? What is the thing that gets you up each morning saying, I can't wait to get to work? Where is this all going? So I think the most exciting thing um, for me uh, as a scientist doing the research that I do is how excited people are to get their results. 
And I think as more and more people start to recognize the power of their own DNA, more and more people join. And at 23andMe, we just hit the 1 million customer mark. So that we have 1 million genotype customers. And so that means that when, when you join 23andMe, we compare you to all those other customers and find and pull out what we call your DNA relatives. And that's just really exciting because the more people that get on board, the more chances right. that you find someone that's a close relative that can help you figure out, oh, that missing piece or, oh, that missing lineage that you've been trying to trace down. Well, it is and so powerful. Exactly. And everyone who's doing this is also excited to help dig into your history and their history together. And that's just really very powerful. Well, it's interesting to see how people are also now able to start mapping their own genetics to see which piece comes from which line. I mean, some people are getting very deep into this stuff. Oh, yeah. So this gets a little tricky, right? But it's so cool. Okay, we think about the genome as one thing, but actually you can think about it as these chromosomes, these long lines that you inherit from your ancestors. And each bit of DNA, it traces back to a particular ancestor. For example, I had a little bit of Ashkenazi ancestry that I was unaware of. So I'm, I'm Polish, from, hence my name. Um, and I was born in Poland, and my parents were born in Poland. And in fact, I can trace my family back many generations to the same very small town in southeastern Poland. And I found out I have a little bit of Ashkenazi ancestry. And actually, by looking at the DNA, which pieces of DNA that are Ashkenazi, I can actually figure out who I got that from, whether it was from my mother or my father, but also who I got that from, which grandparent, which great-grandparent, because each bit of DNA that you inherit, you actually inherited it from a particular ancestor. And by matching up what you inherited from a particular ancestor, which is pretty advanced stuff, you can then see, well, what did you get from that ancestor? Did you get your Ashkenazi or did you get your Eastern European? Or maybe did you get your Native American? Through wow. that ancestor. Well, and so many um, ordinary people are starting to map this out, aren't they? They are. And the more people that map out their own DNA, the more that you can leverage their communal expertise when you compare your DNA to theirs. And you can figure out who might have been your common ancestor and what bit of DNA you got from that common ancestor that you both happen to share. And using that, you can learn about the genetics of your ancestors, and maybe that can tell you about their origins. She's Dr. Kasha Britz. She is a population geneticist with 23andMe. And uh, Kasha, hang on. Can we get you back for another segment? We're going to talk about some of the most common questions you must get dealing with DNA and DNA research. Sounds great. We'll return with more in five minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. ZapTheGrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. Can't figure out how to get your favorite Windows genealogy software running on your MacBook? Look no further than Crossover. Crossover by Codeweavers at www.codeweavers.com allows you to run your Windows software on your Mac without the need to buy a copy of Windows. Crossover is easy to install and simple to use. Crossover supports many popular genealogy packages like Roots Magic, Legacy Family Tree, Personal Ancestral File, Family Tree Builder, and more. Crossover also lets you run other popular productivity apps like Microsoft Office and a wide range of games. 
So if you're looking for an easy, affordable solution to your Windows compatibility needs, visit www.codeweavers.com today to download your free trial of Crossover. And don't forget to use the deal code FAMILY for an additional 40% off when you purchase Crossover. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. And welcome back to America's Family History Show. It's Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. Fisher here, the radio root sleuth, continuing my conversation with 23andMe's Dr. Kasha Britz. She's a population geneticist. And uh, Dr. Britz, this is exciting stuff to be able to regularly ask you questions on the show that come up concerning DNA because so many people are into it. What are some of the stories that you've actually heard come as a result of the DNA testing done through 23andMe? Yeah, sure. Often we get customers who are really starting with nothing. So we get adoptees who are just trying to find any information about their biological parents. And oftentimes it can be really hard if you don't have a lot of information to go off of. We have customers like Trisha, for example. Trisha had been adopted and she managed to track down a little bit of information actually about her mother and about her parents in general. She figured out her parents were college students. Her dad was a basketball star at a nearby college. But then she kind of got stuck and couldn't find anything else about her father. So she joined 23andMe, and lo and behold, a uh, first cousin popped up. So That's gold. Right there. Um, she was able to get in touch with Randy and started chatting with him. And he told Trisha, I think my uncle Ralph was your dad. The sad part was that his uncle, Trisha's father, had died a few years ago, but he had two kids, a son and a daughter. So Randy put Trisha in touch with her half-sister and half-brother. She got to meet Charlene, and Charlene said, you know, I've never had a sister. I've always wanted a sister. As a result, she got to get in touch with her biological family, and they spent Christmas together and they spent the holidays together and got to know each other and find out what family traits they shared. For example, painting and interest in the sea and dragonflies. And it was incredibly lucky connection. And it really only could have happened through the DNA. You know, I am so amazed by how many happy endings we hear in this stuff. You know, once in a while you hear something that doesn't go well, there's another rejection. And and those are things people have to be concerned about when they've discovered something and they have to decide about contact, about what they're capable of handling, what may come about as a result of contact, that type of thing. But for the most part, it seems to be overwhelmingly positive, doesn't it? Yeah, we do very carefully make sure that people consent and opt in to participate in DNA relatives, this ability to get in touch with your genetic relatives. It is a personal choice. It is something that should not be taken lightly because you don't know what you're going to find. But I think the vast majority of people who have connected with relatives, we've just heard an incredible number of positive stories. We have people like Diane who lost her mother when she was nine years old and as a result kind of got lost touch with her mother's side of the family. She spent years looking, trying to get in touch with them, trying to find them. All her aunts, her uncles, her cousins who were part of her early childhood, she just couldn't find as an adult. And, wow. And they had kind of given up 
she had been looking with the help of her daughter and they decided to try DNA and found her family. Her daughter actually, I believe, had joined 23andMe and looked and found a close relative match and figured out how they were related and found her family. I guess it was a first cousin once removed. Boy, that's pretty close. Yeah, and they figured out that they were connected through their grandmother, and she found her family through DNA. What a great experience. You know, the the living people, those seem to be the stories that touch most. But many of us are just genealogists. We want to prove something. And I know I've had an experience myself with DNA where I had found a Bible record of a person of the same name as my ancestor, and it gave her birth date. And I believed it to be the person I was looking for, and I still do. But as a result of DNA, I found five different people that descended from the same parents and great-grandparents that this person did. And so that confirmed to me that I had the right ancestor. So I'm very confident in the line as a result of that DNA. I'm sure you run into a lot of stories like that as well. How do people use DNA to break down the brick walls? There's two things, exactly like you said. If you're trying to find something about an ancestor, you can really leverage the information, like you said, across your cousins. You confirmed what you thought based on looking at all these cousins that also descend from that common ancestor. And so you can do a similar thing by getting in touch with your DNA relatives to try and figure out how you're related and to pinpoint who your common ancestor was. In particular, one of the things that we do at 23andMe is we provide, so the scientific term is local ancestry, but what that really means is we estimate your ancestry along every bit of your DNA. So not just give you a proportion, you know, 56%, whatever ancestry. What we do is for every bit of your DNA, we actually tell you, okay, this bit, this part of this chromosome, we estimate that to be British Irish, for example. Hmm. And so what you can do, and this is kind of a tricky thing, but you can actually look at what DNA you share with your DNA relatives and sort of put that together with what the origins geographically of that bit of DNA are and try and figure out, okay, if you're trying to hunt down your British Irish ancestor, well, then you want to look for people who share and match your DNA at the same place that you have that British Irish ancestry if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You can then start to dig in and try and figure out which of your DNA relatives you should try and contact and try and find your British ancestor or your Irish ancestor, or in my case, my Ashkenazi ancestor, right? Right. Have you been able to identify who that person was, by the way? I have not, but I'm looking. I know it comes from my maternal grandmother's side. Right. And you've got to find people who match that particular segment, right? Yes, exactly. So if you can figure out who else is descended from the person that gave you that bit of DNA, so you look for that match, you can then try and talk with them to figure out who that common ancestor might have been. Right, because they might have information you don't, and you can wind up sharing it. You can also do triangulation, right? Exactly. So by triangulation, you're looking for DNA that you share with someone who you know, let's say you know you're related to your second cousin through a particular grandparent or great-grandparent, something like that. Then if you now find a new DNA relative who also shares that same bit of DNA with both you and that cousin, then you now know that all three of you are descended from the same common ancestor. Right. And that tells you about how this new person is related to your family tree. And and it's exciting and really fun to do. That was actually the method we used to to help my friend recently identify her birth mother and her birth father was this triangulation. And it really can happen very quickly, can't it? I mean, it's it's really kind of easy to see if, if you're a cousin of this person and a cousin of that person and they're cousins to each other, then their common ancestor must be your common ancestor. Exactly. Well, it's an exciting new field, and and it keeps going. Where's it going in the future, by the way, Kasha? We just have a little time left. So there's a lot of different ways that I think as more people understand the power of their DNA and more people join, we're obviously going to be making more and more connections. So we're always trying to improve the ancestry estimates that we provide. But I really think the exciting part is as people understand just how connected we are and we're trying to get to really grasp 
how many connections bring us together and how we're all so interconnected. I think it's going to help people understand just how small the world is. And as we get more and more people who are doing their DNA, I think we're going to get this global family tree where we can see in just a few generations how we're all really linked to each other. I think we're echoing an awful lot of people right now, including our friend A.J. Jacobs from the Global Family Reunion, who feels very much the same way. I think we all do. Dr. Kasha Britz, it's been a joy to talk to you. Thanks so much for coming on. And we look forward to learning more about DNA in the coming weeks and months. Great. Thanks so much for having me. And coming up next, he's our preservation authority, Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com, answering your questions on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show, and ExtremeGenes.com. Hi, Genies, it's Fisher, and I've been telling you about MyHeritage.com's amazing new technology that searches your family tree day and night for you, finding matches even while you sleep in documents and other people's trees. Here's a find I never would have made without it. It's a newspaper story about a relative of mine, Paul Sagal, who I knew many years ago. It's from 1943, when Paul was serving in the Pacific. When he learned his father died, he wrote a poem to his brother that indicated he wouldn't be returning for the funeral. He wrote, There'll be no furlough for me. I'm in the Marines, you see, alive and well as I am. Memories I'll keep of my dad. Then the newspaper editor added, These are all the sentiments that will win this war. There are treasures like this one waiting for you now. Put MyHeritage.com's superb technology to work for you with a 20% discount. Just enter the one-word promo code ExtremeGenes. MyHeritage.com is the next big thing. Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps people access and learn from their DNA. 23andMe.com offers one of the most detailed ancestry composition reports on the market today, telling you what percent of your DNA is from different regions around the world. The 23andMe service also allows you to connect with people who may be related to you through DNA. With over a million customers, you could discover hundreds of matches with relatives who share your DNA and ancestry. Simply order a DNA kit at 23andMe.com slash extreme genes and your kit will arrive in the mail. Provide a small saliva sample and send it back in the prepaid package. When your reports are ready, you can access them in a secure online account and start exploring. Find out why over 1 million people from around the world have done 23andMe. Order your kit today for $99 at 23andMe.com slash extreme genes. That's the number 23andMe.com slash extreme genes. Did you know that Family Search Family Tree is available through a powerful new mobile app experience? That's right. Now you can view, edit, and even add information to ancestors in your family tree whenever and wherever you are. You no longer need to wait to get home or make a date with your computer to view or update your family tree. You can add details to your tree when visiting with family or when capturing details from a trip to the cemetery. You can share new family history discoveries from classrooms settings. You can even make the most of your time when waiting for doctor appointments or car repairs. Get started today by downloading the free Family Search Family Tree app to your Apple or Android device. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to get the Family Tree app for free. Exploring and expanding your family tree has never been more convenient. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to download the Family Search Family Tree mobile app today. It is preservation time at Extreme Genes, America's family history show at ExtremeGenes.com. Fisher here, the radio root sleuth with Tom Perry, the preservation authority from TMCPlace.com. If you have email questions for him, you can reach him at Ask Tom at tmcplace.com. Hi, Tom. Good to see you again. Good to be here. We have an email from Ryan. He says, my wife and I were married in 2001 and didn't have a professional videographer at our wedding. Our one regret. So our wedding video is made up of two videos shot by friends and family. One is on a high eight tape. Boy, there's a phrase I haven't heard in a long time. And is fine, and converting it to a new format wouldn't be a big deal. The other, though, is a VHS-C tape, 
And the problem is that the audio on the tape is warbly. If uh, I remember correctly, the camera it was used on would shoot video and audio fine the first time a tape was used, but if it was recorded over, the audio portion of it got warbly. We're looking to digitize our wedding videos to help preserve them, but I thought it would be great if the warbly audio might be corrected during the process. What do you think? Okay, you have a lot of different issues here that we're going to talk about. Let's talk about the video, then we'll talk about the audio. And one thing that you mentioned is really, really true, and people need to be careful of this. If you reuse a tape, a lot of things can happen bad. Tapes are so inexpensive. There's no real reason to actually reuse a tape. And now everything's digital, so people don't even use tape. But just make sure you format stuff properly if you're using a hard drive camera. Okay, let's do the video part of it first, and then we'll get to the audio. Since you've shot stuff with two different cameras, obviously a good high 8 camera, which is really, really nice, and then the VHC, which is pretty much bottom of the barrel, your colors are going to be different. So hopefully you laid down color bars at the beginning of both tapes, because if you did, you can take these two segments, go into Final Cuts Pro. There's two settings. One's called a waveform monitor. One's called a vector scope, and it'll allow you to adjust the colors till the color bars are exactly the same. Once you have the color bars on your monitor looking exactly the same, when you run your tape, they'll look like they were shot with the same camera pretty much. Oh, wow. Okay, so that will help you a lot on the video part. You want to be really careful with that. If you don't have color bars on your camera, what I would do is take them, put them in Final Cuts Pro, the same thing, and you can go into color correction. And just find a scene that's very similar, the lighting's the same, hopefully the people are the same, the clothing's the same, and kind of use that as your base reference. Then in Final Cuts Pro, adjust the color till they're both almost the same. You're going to have to kind of do a little bit of give and take because you might not be able to get the VHSC as clear and crisp as the Hi8. You might have to bring down the quality of your Video 8 just a little bit to be able to get to the highest point on your VHSC, which in the long run will actually be better. Give up a little bit to get something that's going to be more consistent. Then once you have that done, then you want to run it all with those color correction filters on it, and then you've got a video that's at least presentable. Then on the audio, what you want to do is find wherever the audio is the strongest on the Hi8 and use that. And where you need to cut to stuff on the VHSC, hopefully you'll be able to just take out little segments of that and maybe use that video where you still have the Hi8 audio running. So if the scenes are similar, like different things going on where the audio doesn't have to follow the video exactly, Pop in those other pieces of video and don't worry about the audio because it's like what we call B-roll in the industry. Right, sure. If there's some stuff that's very, very specific that you have to have because it's very unique, make sure you get that all lined out. Do the best you can, even if you have photos of your wedding. Sometimes you can drop in photos to cover up some bad video. And then lay down your audio, as I mentioned, on your Hi8 through the entire track. And then on another track, lay down your VHSC video and your audio. And then in the next segment, I'll tell you how you can kind of piece the two together. All right. Boy, interesting stuff and hopefully a solution for Ryan. We will continue in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented a consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. 
When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight, they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to Transfer Duplication. Com. Can't figure out how to get your favorite Windows genealogy software running on your MacBook? Look no further than Crossover. Crossover by Codeweavers at www.codeweavers.com allows you to run your Windows software on your Mac without the need to buy a copy of Windows. Crossover is easy to install and simple to use. Crossover supports many popular genealogy packages like Roots Magic, Legacy Family Tree, Personal Ancestral File, Family Tree Builder, and more. Crossover also lets you run other popular productivity apps, like Microsoft Office and a wide range of games. So if you're looking for an easy, affordable solution to your Windows compatibility needs, visit www.codeweavers.com today to download your free trial of Crossover. And don't forget to use the deal code FAMILY for an additional 40% off when you purchase Crossover. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. ZapTheGrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. All right, final segment, Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show and ExtremeGenes.com. Fisher here, the Radio Root Sleuth, with Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com. He's our preservation authority. And we're talking about this email sent from Ryan about his wedding tape, a VHS C tape, this specific uh, part of the email, Tom, where he says that the audio on the tape got warbly because he remembered that uh, when they used to shoot it, if a tape had been previously used and then they recorded over it, that caused the audio problem. He wants to be able to restore some of that. Is there some software for this? Yeah, there is. In fact, going right back to the Adobe Suites, Adobe makes a program which you use called Adobe Audition. Right. We do the show on this. Adobe Audition is really neat. One of the cool things about the newest version is you can do it visually. We're growing up doing music videos most of my life, doing everything by ear. With Adobe Audition, different sounds are basically different colors. And mm-hmm. so it helps you to see, okay, the yellow part's a bad part, the purple part's a bad part. I need to bring that down, bring it up. So the first thing I would do is take that audio and go and do Adobe Audition and sit there and kind of play with it and manipulate it, spend a couple hours on it, and see what you can do. Because sometimes the warbly stuff you can fix, but sometimes it's so bad you can't. So first try that. If you're not happy with it or you don't have the time to do that, go ahead and put it on a disc and send it to us or even email us at AIFF file. And then we can play around with it and see what we can do as well. Next step, let's say that you go in it and it is so bad there's nothing you can do about it. There's a couple of things you can do. One thing is, if you're looking at the video, sit down there and look at the VHS and have an audio recorder set up with you and your wife and narrate it. You say, Uh oh, hey, this is so-and-so. This is, you know, grandma, da-da-da. She was talking to us about da-da-da. And just kind of recreate it, so to speak, in your own voices. You know, it's neat to be able to hear Aunt Martha or Grandma Ganrich. But if you can't get that, you want to do this. Now, sometimes if you can kind of clean up the warbly audio, so it's kind of audible and it doesn't sound really, really bad. You can use that as kind of a base in the recording and you're still narrating over the top of it. So you're going to hear pieces of Aunt Martha's voice while you're narrating. Say, oh, yeah, this was Aunt Martha. She was yeah, da, 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 da. You can add music. You can do all kinds of stuff. But it really makes it really personal when you go in and add narration. 
And just be real careful when you do that. When you add your narration, always put it on a new audio track. Never mix your audio tracks together because you're going to be going into it, and then you're going to get some great idea and want to go back to something. In fact, oh, no, I mix those audio tracks. I'm going to have to start all over again. So there's enough room on any kind of a computer that you can add several tracks of audio. So every take you do, don't erase the other one. Add a new one, add a new one, add a new one. Because just like when we're work, working in the studio, sometimes you know this part of a segment's better than this part of a segment, and you piece the things together and get something that's really, really quality. I have never seen a TV program where anything was one take. You know, it's no. usually multiple, multiple right. takes. And so do the same thing yourself. Don't say, oh, I screwed up. Let me start all over again. Yeah, start all over again, but then go to audio track two or three or four or five and keep each one individual so then you can go and pull the gems out. And one thing that will help you a lot when you're doing this audio tracking is the first time you go through it, have a legal pad with you or your laptop computer and take notes. Oh, yeah, this is grandma, da 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 and write how long each segment is and then practice it to see how it's going to be and practice on tape put all the pieces together, and you'll be surprised that it might actually come out better than what you thought that you wanted in the original. And, of course, you can get people to actually record you and put this together if you don't feel you have the skills to put this together. Oh, absolutely. If you're by one of our studios, stop in. We can take care of you. If not, there are audio studios all across America in every little and big town. All right, and thanks so much for the email, Ryan. If you have a question for Tom Perry, you can ask Tom at tmcplace.com. Thanks so much, Tom. Thank you. That is a wrap for this week. Thanks once again to Dr. Kasha Britz of 23andMe.com. It is so great to have regular DNA experts on the show now. And if you have questions, of course, you can email me at fisher at extremegenes.com. If you missed any part of the show, of course, the podcast will be up later this week at extremegenes.com and on iTunes and on iHeartRadio's talk channel. And you can download our free Extreme Genes app for iPhone and Android. Take care. Thanks for listening. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice, normal family. 